just trying to change the world here, people. Oh, really? The Facebooking and the tweeting and the Instagramming, all that would not exist without our understanding of science. So it's amazing that you took that as an insult. You mean true for you is different from true for anybody else? Have yeah, to come absolutely, to because I can't think true. either got to be true or not. I can't, no, no. Well, hello, good people. Welcome back to O'Reilly Radio. This is episode 158. I know I said last week that it was show 158, and I was wrong. That was show 157. But today, this is actually O'Reilly Radio 158, recorded Friday, July 7th, 2017, where we dismantle the current events for your edutainment through mostly rational conversations that make you go O'Reilly. I'm your host, Andy Cowan, and I have my usual suspect with me. I have got David O'Connor. Hello. From O'Connor's House of Tinfoil Hats himself. And there it is, right there in the live feed. He's, uh, he's wearing the foil hat right now. It's, um, it's super. It's really a super hat. It's the best hat. It's huge. <laughs> All righty. Um, so before we get started, uh, we make mistakes. If you find one or have a suggestion for how we can otherwise better serve you and the community at large and be better citizens and netizens and et cetera, et cetera, please go ahead and let us know about it. O'Reilly Radio Podcast at gmail.com. That's O-R-L-Y-R-A-D-I-O-P-O-D-C-A-S-T at gmail.com. You can also phone it in or text it in at 470-222-6759. And you could also join us by being a patron of the show. And uh, you could join the ranks of Donald Davis, Melissa G., Henry, and Daniel Andrew Duncan. They are awesome, awesome folks, and uh, we thank them every single time. Okay, so i uh, going to change up a, a few things here in the first segment that we do, because as you might know, we break the show up into different segments because sometimes we just uh, talk a long time about everything. No. This is conversations. You know, no. I mean, yeah, we yeah. might we might sit down and expect a thirty or forty five minute conversation like between Trump and Putin, but you know, we're certainly going to go for at least two hours. Shots fired. At least, yeah. I may have <laughs> shot. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I may I may have uh, done a prelude there. Um, but you see, they were, uh, yeah, I they, they were calling it a marathon session. I <laughs> I. Man, no, we we've talked yeah, like so six hours <laughs> on the show just straight. So I don't marathon. They got nothing. They got nothing on us. Yeah. So, but in an event, in a um, an effort to better serve the community and our listeners, and also to give us a better view, a snapshot of our either decline or perhaps our our growth. Going no to take, decline. Going to, well, yeah, it could. It's probably going to be a decline. But you know, we're going to look at it, and we're we're basically going to take a global pulse here, and we're going to start with money. In fact, most of it's really going to be money, honestly, because that's a, that's what makes the world go round. So first, uh, today being July seventh, twenty seventeen, the Dow is up 044 percent, closing at. 21,414.34, uh, which is up 94.3. That's that's pretty good. NASDAQ, is uh, it closed up 1.04% at 6,153 and 8 cents. And S&P 500, that standard and Poor's 500, is up 0.64% and is sitting pretty at 2,425.18. I think that watching this week after week, we're going to we're going to tell you you know how it did from that uh, the larger number you know what its actual closing number. That's what we're going to look at week over week to see how it's going because really the market's a volatile place. You could watch mm. it over the course of a day and it will do this. It'll go up and down and and it's not going to mean anything. But over the course of a week, that's when people. You know, long-term investors. Not that a week is a long-term investment. Do not take investment advice from a podcast. Um, <laughs> but it should give us a better picture, I hope, of how things go. Uh, if you have any feedback on that or if we're just doing things wrong or if you'd like us to look at something else and, and provide that uh, week over week, let us know. 
email us. Uh, also, the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, has something that I didn't really know about called the XDR or SDR, which is a basket of currencies. I know. It's kind of weird. It essentially is the five most traded currencies in the foreign exchange markets, and they include the U.S. dollar. It's a weighted average, by the way, and this could be a total rabbit trail that you could go down like I did earlier today, which is why there's not a whole lot else in, going to be in the show to try and figure this out. But the U.S. dollar, the euro, the Chinese yuan, the Japanese yen, and the British pound are the current five currencies in this index, essentially. But they're weighted. They're not just on their own. So the U.S. dollar equates to 41.73% of the whole number. The euro is 30.93%. Then you've got the Chinese yuan, which was just added to the, to the rank in 2015. They do this every five years. They change it around. Uh, so it's, it's ranking in at 10.92%, uh, and then followed by the Japanese yen at 8.33, and the British pound at 8.09%. Um, now, it's, it's rather interesting that... Yeah. Because what is this number, you know, this XDR value? It's when countries borrow money from each other, this is what they use. That's it's one of the uses for it. It's got a few different uses. Um, one of the other uses is this the XDR also serves as like a fill in currency in times when countries aren't printing money, so liquidity is missing from the market, but they still want those currencies. Hmm. So instead of getting so the, the classic example that they showed in the uh, link and Wikipedia was in the 1970s, the U.S. stopped printing money. People still wanted U.S. dollars. Oh, right, right. So yeah. instead of getting U.S. dollars, they got XDR notes. Well, people didn't. Countries did. Right. Because people cannot hold an XDR. There is nothing like that. I mean, it would almost be like a, like a Bitcoin. Because it's it's more of a virtual currency. It's a virtual currency, but it's only for nation states. It's yeah. n private institutions do not hold on to these things. Governments. No, there's this is there's this is a different them. level of money. Yeah, there's nobody printing them. This is all a virtual currency, which is why it's an index. So it's it's really an interesting thing that I didn't know existed, and it's one of those things that I think we ought to know about what's going on behind the curtain. Yeah, because if you want to know what's going on in the world, follow the money. Follow the money, and this is just another way to follow the money. So we're we're <laughs> we're eating. We're giving you options. We're here. eating our own dog food at this point. You know, okay, we're we say follow the money. We're going to follow the money. <laughs> Damn it, that's what we're going to do. This is follow the money part A. Uh, yeah. So the U.S. dollar, one dollar. I imagine that most of our listeners out there are U.S. citizens. But, uh, you know, you could surprise me. And you ought to email me so you let me know. But one U.S. dollar will get you 88 euro cents. I guess that's what we would call it, 0.88 of a euro dollar. It'll get you 6.81 Chinese yuan, uh, which is also known as the renminbi, I think. Yeah, that sounds... That's how I read it. Yeah. Uh, it'll get you... 113.89 Japanese yen. Or it'll get you 78... Oh, what, what are the... What are the uh, in British pounds, what are the... Like pence? Six pence? Yeah, I, I can't remember all the... How they break it down, because it's not in cents. It's in something else. But anyway, 0.78 of a British... Great British... Great Britain pound. Yeah. That's it. G B P is how it's uh, notated, and you can. I pulled those off of uh, Google for yeah. today, so those are the current trading values. There are one hundred pence to a pound. One hundred pence to a pound. Okay, so seventy-eight pence you'll get for one Versus U.S. dollar. U.S. pennies. Right. Pretty much the same thing. Okay. Now, 
there's other things that uh, that matter a great deal to us, and that would be fossil fuel consumption. So, let's see what they've got us over a barrel. Apparently, crude prices have been falling. Falling how far? So right now it's forty four dollars and twenty three U S dollars for a barrel. At least that's how it is currently being exchanged. Uh, it is the WTI trade, if you're actually trying to follow along at home, which of course you should. But there's a lot of different oil commodities and traders out there. But if you just look it up, the very first one that comes up is WTI, which I believe is West Texas International or something like that, which is strange. But that's mm. the first one that pops up. So forty, But it's also really close, like within a dollar or two of all of the others. So this is, it's a decent average. So $44.23 U.S. dollars per barrel for oil today. We'll see, again, this is just our first toe in the water to figure out how we're going to follow the money going down, down the line. I think this will help us out a great deal, and, uh, and this will be kind of an evolving segment. And if you have things that you think that we should track... You know, that w- things that we can track is really an important thing where we can just yeah. look it up, find it really easily, and bam, it's there. Not something that requires, like, a huge study and a survey of thousands of people to do every week. That's not something that's um, feasible. So just a, a standard uh, price like this is is a real easy metric for us to look at. Let us know what you think. So then, probably, yeah. I just, I finally just thought of something: is the oh, uh, yes. y- the deficit in comparison to GDP? Oh, the ratio. Mm. I don't know that I really want to see how that goes because I know it's that's it's bad. It's going to be an important number, though. Mm. Yeah. And then next week we'll have to talk about what deficit versus uh, <laughs> versus debt actually is. Because a lot of people just don't know. And that's bad. So, okay, so do you have those numbers? I'm looking up a good site for them now. Okay, you look that up. And we will link all that in the show notes, which will be available for show 158 uh, out on our website at www.oreillyradio.com. Okay, so further on, I kind of alluded to the Trump and Putin uh, meeting at the G20. But before we get into that, because that's, you're going to hear a lot about it, and, you know, there's not really a whole lot that I can say about it that 9,000 other pundits that actually get paid for this are going to tell you. So what they're not going to tell you is what the G20 actually is. So I wanted to break it down a little bit. I found, I found some great resources, and I, I put them together, which is why the show is not going to be um, very news-heavy. This is more the news you can use in your brain. This is kind of a history lesson that is history happening now. So the G20 is the Group of 20. It's an international forum that brings together the world's 20 leading industrialized and emerging economies. So again, we're following the money. The group accounts for 85% of the world's GDP, that's gross domestic product, and two-thirds of its population. So it's kind of it's the heavy hitters. These are the countries that really essentially matter and will either make or break the world. So yes. yeah. Of course, like any of these uh, big international forums, a lot of the stuff is going to happen in informal meetings on the side. Just people happen to be in the same room and deals happen to be made over a glass of champagne or whatever they happen to be uh, pouring over in in Germany today. Vodka. Well, it's Germany, so it's beer. A lot lot of beer. There's a lot of beer. And Rieslings. Delicious Rieslings. I digress. Okay. Okay. So initially, attendance at G20 summits was limited to the finance ministers and central bank governors of member nations when it was established 17 years ago. But since 
an inaugural meeting between G20 leaders in Washington, D.C., followed the collapse of Lehman Brothers in 2008. Summits began, uh, summits between G20 leaders themselves have become an annual event. The first G20 summit occurred in Berlin in December 1999 and was hosted by the German and Canadian finance ministers. Since then, there have been 20 G20 meetings between, actually 21 now since we're we're talking we're talking past the the one that happened today, uh, between the finance ministers and central bank governors, and eleven summits between heads of state or government of G20 economies. So no, actually, I take that back. I was reading ahead of myself. So no, there have been twenty just between the finance ministers and central bank governors, and now there have been twelve summits between the heads of state at these uh, these events. So after the last summit in China, uh, Germany assumed the G20 presidency in December of 2016. Although Berlin hosted ministerial-level G20 meetings in 1999 and 2004, the Hamburg event, which happened today, will be the first time Germany has hosted the G20 heads of government. So it's kind kind of a big deal. So David, who makes up the G20? What, what nations are in that thing? Oh. <clears throat> All right. So the G20 is made up of Argentina, Australia, Brazil, Canada, France, Germany, India, Indonesia, Italy, Japan, Mexico, Russia, Saudi Arabia, South Korea, Turkey, the United Kingdom, the United States of America, China, South Africa, and the final member is the European Union represented by the European Commission. A rotating council president, rotating council presidency, and the European Central Bank. Spain, as a president, as a permanent non-member invitee, also attends leader summits. Other countries also attend summits at the invitation of the host country. While it has become customary for the chair of the ASEAN, which is the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, and representatives of the African Union and NIPAD. New Partnership for Africa's Development to be President and Leader Summits. You know, I, I did not, I was unaware of those particular groups. You know, nah. As, as usual, when we start to dig down these, these, um, mm-hmm. topics, yeah, topics, we find out that there's a lot that we don't know. Yeah. So, there, you don't know what you don't know, Internet. Yeah, you really <laughs> you don't. don't. So. You don't know. Um, and while it's called G20, we're meeting the 20 heads of state. Yeah, there's more people there. <laughs> there's a few more. A few more. There's like, few why more. is Spain a permanent non-member? Like, no, we always add Spain. I know they're not important, but no, we always add them. Why do we do that? It doesn't make sense. No. It makes sense to somebody somewhere. Maybe it's nepotism. Maybe somebody's uncle somewhere. You know, I don't know. <laughs> so... It's, it's somebody's grandma. We can't not invite her. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she has to be there. Oh, is, is this an abuela thing? Abuela's got to be there? <laughs> yeah, okay. uh, yeah, yeah, so currently, uh, to, to move it along here, uh, <laughs> the meetings tend to occur on an annual basis. However, the leaders met twice a year in 2009 2010 when the global economy was in crisis. Mm. And next year, Buenos Aires will host the gathering as Argentina becomes the first South American nation to host a G20. Ooh, well, we'll have to look at that. I wonder, I wonder if that's going to be just the finance ministers or if it's going to be the world leaders. It's probably going to be the world leaders. I don't know. I wonder if they're going to start passing the torch like the Olympics in this thing. Mm, it kind of seems like they're doing it. Now, as we also dig in, you might have also heard another, uh, like, a car serial number, like, you know, G20. Well, no, what, what about the G8? Well, the G8 is the Group of Eight, and it was established in 1976, but renamed after the admission of Russia in 1998. It's an international forum for the eight major industrial economies. Uh, It comprises Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, Russia, the United Kingdom, and the United States. However, since 2014, Russian membership has been suspended following the country's annexation of Crimea. Uh, The G8 seeks 
cooperation on economic issues facing the major industrial economies, while the G20 reflects the wider interests of both developed and emerging economies. So that's just a little, a little taste of, um, of the history of this thing. That actually went a lot faster than I thought it was going to. Hmm. Should we talk a little bit about the G20? About what happened today? Yeah. Do you have something thrown in there? I don't have, I don't have anything specific, but um, some of the big things was, of course, uh, you know, here in the United States, the only news that seems to make any difference is Trump. And Trump met, here I'm, I'm doing the air bunny ears, for the first time since we're not really positive. The last that, time since the first time. The last time since the first time that he's actually met President Putin. Uh, they had a, a chat, one of those side meetings that I alluded to earlier. and Weird. Right. Yeah, weird. Weird that these kind of things happen. Just get a bunch of politicians in a room and see what happens. That's kind of what, what this ends up being. So it's weird, and they were all palsy. Everything's great. Yep. The, <laughs> I got so to laugh about that. The White House said in advance that 35 minutes had been allotted for the meeting, but it mm -hmm. extended well beyond that, clocking in at two hours and 16 minutes. Uh Weak sauce. They could do better than that. But yeah. apparently they did send in Melania to break up the meeting, to kind of move it along. It's like, hey, how about you go in there and uh, coax them out? That didn't work. They kept talking. Um, the meeting was between Putin, Trump, Rex Tillerson, and the other Russian guy that I cannot remember his name. Uh, and their translators. So it was basically... Secretary of State on both sides of the fence and the president of both nations. And they chatted for a long time, obviously, on all sorts of things. Uh, apparently, the Russian involvement in our elections was mentioned and dismissed rather quickly. <laughs> Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, who That's attended the, the meeting along with Mr. Tillerson, said Mr. Trump accepted Mr. Putin's assurances that Russia did not meddle in the U.S. election. I think it was more along the lines of agree to disagree. And the they both yeah. they were both happy with the meeting, which yeah. means they both have no idea what happened. <laughs> you know Mr. Tillerson said the two leaders had agreed to continue the discussion with an eye towards securing a commitment that Russia would not interfere in US affairs in the future. Don't do it again. Oh Pooty. <laughs> You old scoundrel. You old so-and-so. <laughs> now you get your hands off our elections. <laughs> and we'll let you have Crimea. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. buddy. Not yeah. your buddy, pal. Not your pal, friend. Yeah. Not your friend, man. A lot Not of, your man, guy. A lot of that. A lot of that. Not your um, guy, dude. Other <laughs> things of interest. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Um in, pa in a passing comment, Trump was asked about, uh, you know, are you still trying to get Mexico to, to pay for that wall? And he said, absolutely. <laughs> so he's still going down, down that hole. Uh, it's so not going to happen. It's, I think at this point that's just trolling. I, you know, I don't know with him. I don't know. I mean, yeah, he is a troll. I think he's pretty much... Secure in that uh, in that moniker. He he's an internet troll in the White House. Yeah, but I think he I think he believes that that's what he's going to try and do, because all the weird things that he said on the campaign trail, he's tried to make happen. All of them, no matter how inane and stupid, that mm -hmm. the, the people said, "Oh no, that was a metaphor for something else." No, no, he was he was literally going to do that for you. But no, don't believe him. Don't believe what he says. You know, and and that's that's the weird thing. Since he is a a bona fide liar, because we have tape of him saying one thing and then immediately contradicting himself. I'm not casting aspersions. I'm simply calling out the truth. You know, you, you can 
say what you will about that, but there's tape, there's evidence. It's right there. But for somebody that is so at home with telling things that are wrong, he actually has been, i got to give it to him, he's been very credible with all the things that he said he was going to do. He is trying to do it. Those were campaign promises that he's actually trying to fulfill. They're impossible. They're ludicrous. Hmm. But he's trying to do it, and I guess that's that's a feather in his cap, I suppose. He should wear more hats, I think. Because then he it doesn't have the, the, the hair monster thing that he's got going on there. Should just shave it. Probably should. Probably should. Hey. I, I think just, I, I recall, just give in to the hair loss, shave it. I think I recall somebody on the campaign trail actually like yanking on his hair so that he could sh- prove to everybody that it was real. Yeah, no, that's called glue. <laughs> everybody has it. Not everybody needs it. That's true, I suppose. That's true. So, um,. I don't know. We might be having some some issues here. Uh, okay. All right. So, so somebody was apparently trying to trying to chat with us in the uh, on the Twitch stream, but I'm not watching the Twitch stream, so I did not see. Oh, it. that's me. Okay. So, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, we we've got uh, we got the Twitch stream working. The Facebook stream is not working anymore with uh, with XSplit Broadcaster, which is what I'm using to output everything. So I'm terribly sorry about that, but you know you get what you pay for, and that was a free service. So we'll hey, uh, free. Yeah, we'll we'll see how that goes, but uh, I will have everything uploaded, and and hopefully at least I've got the audio uh, issues all sorted out, and things are working there. Uh it's been a long week for me, and I'm kind of burned out. And looking at all this and trying to figure out the world uh, has been a, a difficult, trying thing. It, I know it doesn't seem like it uh, to many, many people, probably. And, and really, as I look at it again, it's like, why did that tire me out so much? That's not really anything. But it did. So I think uh, I'm going to have to bring this one to a close. So next week, we'll talk a little bit more about what uh, what happened at the G20 and what it means. Because really, since it just happened today, there's only so much that we can talk about. Yes. Um, and and there's a lot to unpack there because it, was, it wasn't just the world leaders. It was their, their staffs were all there. Yeah. Um, the, the interpreters were there. You know, press was there. Riots were there. Rioters were there, <laughs> burning cities down. Yeah, yeah. Hamburg was, uh, was an interesting... Um, yep cluster these people are not well liked these heads of the top 20 no. uh economies in the world no and several of the of the looters and rioters actually were stopped and said that they were there because of donald trump so yeah who is as as much as liberals dislike him here uh he's truly despised Across the world. Yeah. To levels that are impressive. <laughs> uh, and scary. Yeah. Speaking of impressive, you uh, you linked in the U.S. Debt Clock. USDebtClock.org. Uh, and that's, that's an amazing thing uh, that folks ought to probably... Go take a look at. It. Let me see if I can bring it up. Nope, that's the wrong desktop. See if I can bring it into the. Uh, no, I don't think I'm going to be able to with any reasonable amount of time. Okay, so it's got I've, everything from the national debt to the number of prison inmates we have. It's yeah, that's crazy. Okay, oh, dollar to gold ratio as of right now. Dollar to silver ratio. Food stamp recipients, Medicare enrollees, U.S. disabled. This has, this has got a lot it's going on. A lot on here. of stuff to unpack. Um, wow. So, uh, the current uh, U.S. federal budget deficit 
as calculated by this clock, is $667 billion and rising quickly as our uh, fearless leader increases spending on lots of things while doing uh, little newsworthy things that supposedly reduce spending but don't really reduce it by anything substantial. Yeah. Well, so yeah, he's deficits. he's after the quote unquote Obama record from when Obama took office and tax revenues were down and we just got done with eight years of let's spend more money and tax less and then have a market crash. So I think he can make it within the next couple of years of two trillion dollar deficit. Oh, this is fun. OK, so they also have the debt clock time machine up in the corner. Yeah. So what happens if we go back in time? So the current U.S. federal budget deficit is $667 trillion. No, that's billion. Billion. $539 million. 700 and rising. 1,000. Okay. So that's today, 7-7. Let's go back to, let's see, where can we go back? We can go back to 2012. Let's see what it said in 2012. On this day in 2012, the U.S. federal budget deficit was one trillion dollars, one trillion one hundred thirty-six billion six hundred twenty-nine thousand. So perhaps we've gotten better. No, we're going to blast through that. And then if we go back to 2008. The federal budget deficit was three hundred and eighty nine billion. So Obama did put a lot into the into the deficit. That's all the health care stuff. And also the enormous bailouts for the banks and for the cars and everything that, mm-hmm. that he had to do to bring the economy back around. That's interesting. So Oh, we can go all the way back to 1980. Yeah. What was it in 1980? Knock off an entire zero and then some. No, federal budget deficit then was $52 billion. $52,133,864,000. Oh, what 30 years will do. Yeah. Uh, The U.S. national debt was only in billions in 1980. That is that is interesting. So then in 1990, it was $3 trillion. I, I encourage you to play at home. And then in 2000, it added another $2 trillion. But there was a budget surplus on this day in 2000. Of two hundred and nine yep. billion dollars. Thanks, Quentin. Yep. That actually worked. So And then by two thousand four, deficit four hundred and four billion. That's an amazing amount. Yeah, just six hundred billion dollars just gone. Boom. Weird. Yeah. And state debt rose, too. State debt, local debt, all sorts of bad things happened. This is, an, this is a very valuable resource. Yep. Very valuable resource. And it, they've added quite a bit in that amount of time, uh, along with the U.S. population, U.S. workforce. This is, I'm going to go back to this, like, all the time just to get these numbers. Just, like, bam, yeah. I got numbers. Look at that. Yeah, there's, a, there's another clock I put up there. And it actually has the GDP versus the national debt. Okay. Which is weird. GDP versus national debt. Okay. Oh. This is an interesting... Ow, ow, ow. Sprocket, you are made of sharps. Okay. I have a podcat on my shoulder. There we go. Okay. All right. So you've got U.S. GDP, which is... Nineteen trillion, two hundred ninety billion, two hundred and ten 
million five hundred and a lot more going up and up and up and up for the U.S. GDP. And it says U.S. national debt, but the national debt's going down while the deficit is increasing, which do, seems counterintuitive. I'm not sure how their math works. Well, no, because the, the deficit is what's being spent over and, over and above the, the budget. Right, which would imply that the debt should be going up. Well, they're two separate things. So you can pay down the debt and still run at a, de at a deficit on your budget especially if one of those line items in your budget is pay down the debt. But you'd be accruing debt while paying off debt, which would negate any effect of reducing your debt. Yeah. So that is, that is interesting. It makes no sense. Okay, so U.S. national debt there is going down. What about on the other clock, the national debt clock? So... U.S. national debt there is going up. So something's broke there. I believe so. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So don't forget to check your sources. Always check your references. Into, uh, yeah. So. Read to understand, people. Yeah, you got to read to understand. Mm. Uh, in fact, there is... What's this link? Is that a link? That's not a link. I guess not. Okay. I like to click on things. It's like, oh, I went from having a, a, a regular cursor to a finger. Okay, so does it mean I can do anything? No, it doesn't mean I can do anything. Nah. Okay, well, that's fun. So our picks today is usdebtclock.org. Go take a look at that one. Apparently there is an iPhone app as well for those of you that are in the iOS ecosystem. And also you might want to check out uh, Poodwaddle.com World Clock Reg 1 uh, for an interesting another interesting clock not a, it's not as good don't like it's it. not as good no don't it's like got it some good. problems yeah it has some very clear problems but. this is interesting though it has deaths by cancer heart disease deaths and auto accidents suicide US marriages and US divorces it's interesting. Uh, it looks like there's a divorce every couple seconds in the United States. Oh, yeah. But there's more people getting married than there are people getting divorced. Because that number's going up faster. So, little fun things. Uh, fun things to look at. I don't think that's in here. Public school students, charter school students. Oh, that's going to be a number to look at. The public U.S. Schools, trade deficit? No, public school students versus charter school students. Oh, yeah. That's going to be one to look at. Uh, right now, public school students is 50,251,798, while charter schools hold 4,010,865 students. Interesting. We have 1.3 million people in our armed services. Yeah. 21 million veterans. It's there's a lot to look at here. Definitely a lot to look at here. Manufacturing jobs. They've got that number. Uh oh, and it's still going up. Okay, manufacturing jobs now is 12,402,253. Hmm. Dollar to citizen ratio. Dollar to oil ratio. Hey, that number's wrong, according to what I found earlier. Okay, yeah, there's a uh, there's interesting debt to debt per citizen, debt per taxpayer, which are two different numbers. Revenue per taxpayer, revenue per citizen. Payroll tax revenue. It's interesting, and they and they're green and red. This is this is a great resource. It really is. But um, this is not good radio, though. So I understand that, and you probably already turned us off. So what we'll do is we'll wrap for today, and we will bring you more edutainment next week. So let's, uh, let's wrap this puppy up. All right. So 
If you like what we've done here and you'd like to help us out, there's a few ways. You can donate to the show through patreon.com slash Radio and get early access to full show content and maybe other random things as as I have the time to do them. I'm keep working on that. Make the algorithms work for us by reviewing us on iTunes or wherever you happen to find us, and that'll help boost our rankings a little bit, get in front of more eyeballs. Use your words and tell somebody about us, and of course, engage with us directly. Send us a message on the social medias or the electronic mails at Podcast at gmail.com, or if they're more talkative sort, there's 470-222-ORLY. That's 6759. It's always ready to take your call or your text. You want to do it? He's not going to do it. What are we doing? (laughs) And if you don't like what we've done here this evening, you can contact the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-8255. Available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The Lifeline provides free and confidential support for people in distress, prevention and crisis resources for you and your loved ones, and best practices for professionals. Thank you for choosing to waste your valuable time on us. This has been a Really Radio, part of the Random Acts Company. This work is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 United States license, including Music Rocket and Pimgia, created by Kevin McLeod of Incomptech.com. And we will see you next week with more on what happened on the G20. At the G20. On the G20. (laughs) Maybe M80. G20 news next week. Yeah, yeah. We'll see see how that goes. And we'll see if we can uh, shoehorn some science and uh, get some trends working for you. Alrighty, we'll talk to y'all real soon. Toodles. Peace out.